The next logical step was to create procedural programming languages. That's where a problem is broken down into individual areas and each area is programmed separately. These areas are called procedures in programming. And this method has two big advantages. The first is that it's easy to correct errors. If there's something wrong in your program, if there's a bug, and things don't work exactly how you want them to, you know which area of the program is causing the problem. You go to the procedure dealing with that thing, check it out, and you have maybe only so much code to worry about. The second big advantage is that once you've got something complete and it's working, it will work forever, so you can reuse it lots of times. You can call this procedure in several places in your program. You can even copy this procedure to another program. And because you know it works in the first program, you know it works in this one. The first programming language of this type was Pascal, developed by Professor Nicholas Wirth as a teaching language in about 1968. However, he decided that there were changes he wanted to make. So in 1973, he started developing another procedural language called Modular, which went through several iterations. Now, these languages had big advantages. You could break the problem down. But it also meant that the program now couldn't be read from beginning to end. And since all programmers had been brought up on the linear programming theory, this meant changing to this way of thinking was rather difficult for some. So let's look at this in a little more detail. A procedural program starts with a procedure called main usually and that then calls other procedures in turn. So you might have input to handle all the inputs for the program, a process procedure that does all the work and an output procedure that then displays the results. Each of these in turn could be broken down into separate areas so that you have a whole range of procedures and one program can contain hundreds of procedures.